This is a partially built receiver that could become a transceiver. It's based on the original bit X. That was the one before the DDS VFO. It uses all discrete components except for the IC audio amplifier. I'm using an N3ZI DDS to provide the stable VFO and the digital readout. The S meter is not connected and neither are most of the controls. But you can adjust the volume, the tuning and the band as well as the VFO tuning speed. There's no AGC or other refinements yet. I started building this about three or four years ago and made rapid progress. However, it was put off to one side. The original aim was for it to be a six band transceiver. That required six individual band pass filters covering bands between 160 and 20 meters. However, it seemed to be a bit deaf on 40 meters. Obviously a problem with the bandpass filter, but I never got around to having a look at it until a few days ago. As often happens when I start projects, leave them idle for years and come back to them, I generally make the project a little bit less ambitious. After all, a transceiver with half the bands on the air is better than one that doesn't work at all. So I've scaled this back to cover 160 80 and 40 meters only. That's how long it's been sitting idle. Yeah, have a great day, Bob. That's the thing. Uh, yeah. Well, if you can't get out, you know, the front panel is made of printed circuit board. That's easy to work with, particularly handy when I had to cut the large hole for the panel meter, which I haven't yet connected. Mounted on the back is the N3ZI DDS VFO. There's other things as well. This is an audio low pass filter. This isn't going to be a serious CW transceiver. It's mainly going to be for SSB, but the filter will provide some help when receiving CW signals. Here's the rotary switch for the band. And these are the bandpass filters. I'll give you a better look later on. This is just a bit of board for the LEDs that are going to indicate transmit or receive. They're not connected yet. Most of the circuitry underneath is complete. Most of it is common to the receiver and the transmitter, as per the BitX design. This is the LM386 receiver audio amplifier. I can't quite remember, but on the left, I think, is the transmit microphone amplifier. The RF choke is in series with the microphone, which prevented some RF feedback issues. On the right is an audio preamp. Down here, on the bottom right, is the BFO. That's common to both transmit and receive. The IF is 9 megahertz actually a little bit above that, 9.049. In the middle of the picture is the balance modulator. That's also the product detector on receive. Very simple two diode circuit. Here is the four crystal filter using the XCB crystals. Again, common to both transmit and receive. The two transistors you see on the bottom left are a bi-directional amplifier. And I should mention there is another bi-directional amplifier just after the crystal filter. One transistor is active in transmit and the other in receive. The switching is done by switching DC voltages. Here's another diode mixer, four diodes this time. This is for the part of the circuit that converts your 9 MHz IF to the amateur band that you are operating on. And here is the bandpass filter board that caused so much trouble before. There are three filters, one for 1.8 MHz, another for 3.5 and the other for 7. They use RF chokes as the coils, no winding here. 
There's not much on the top. That's reserved mainly for the transmit section and the low pass filters. On the left is a transmit RF amplifier that amplifies the low level signal from the diode mixer. Then as you can see from the bigger transistor, a bit more power, maybe 100 milliwatts. And then a BD139 stage, which would be fine for 160, 80 and 40 meters to give maybe one watt. This is very makeshift and I'll no doubt rebuild this stage. There will eventually be a higher power RF amplifier as well as switched low pass filters. They'll likely have a relay each with the voltage for that coming from the rotary switch that I'm using to switch between bands. This is fairly primitive and you'll need to change two settings to change bands. The VFO, which is made easy because there are 10 memory positions which are tunable, I can have them preset for each band, and the rotary knob that selects the various filter options between 160, 80 and 40 meters. Also makeshift on the back of this antenna socket is a low pass filter for 80 meters, but I've taken that out of circuit for now and am using an external filter which switches between 40 and 80 meters for my receiving tests. Finally is the transmit receive relay that switches RF and DC to go from transmit to receive. Because the transceiver will be used at home, there's no requirement that it only be run off 12 volts. As it happens, I have a power supply, 12 and 34 volt, that would be suitable 12 volt for the lower power sections and 34 volts for the FET RF power amplifier I'll likely include. Yankee. 
to be in port and through his own to something and that I've done all the paths and that with it. And uh, you know, I, I just hose down the house when uh, when it gets uh, pretty dirty. And uh, speaking of which, I'll have a look on the uh, south side of the caravan too. Uh, a couple of days back there. November, November 592464. Yankee. Four, 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 Pieces whenever I want to do a bit full every so often with a lot of roses. 